Psychology 230. This is Dr. Chastity Bradford and now I will be continuing to dive into chapter 3 as we uh, discuss the chemistry of water and we continue to dive into the other emerging properties of water and I am calling this chapter 3.2b and 3.2c. We have reviewed the cohesive behavior of water. Now we will review the ability of water to moderate its temperature. And we will discuss why that's important uh, at, in terms of an emerging property of water that makes Earth suitable for life. So as we discuss the moderation of temperature, we will review heat and temperature. We'll review uh, high specific heat because water has a very, very high specific heat. And we will discuss evaporative cooling and how all of these terms are important in terms of uh, moderation of temperature. And speaking of terminology, it is important that you all review the terms, especially those on pages 48 and 49 as it relates to temperature moderation, because a lot of students get tripped up on the terms and not understanding the terminology. Now, how is it that water can moderate its temperature? Okay. Um, it does so by absorbing heat from the air when the air is warmer than the water. And it does so by releasing heat that it has stored in it to the air when the air is cooler. And it's very effective okay, at moderating air temperature because whether it's absorbing or releasing heat into the air, uh, it doesn't change its own temperature, okay? So it's effective at moderating air temperature without changing its own temperature. Now let's look at heat versus temperature, and they are different. And in order to discuss these, we have first to review kinetic energy, and kinetic energy is the energy of motion Okay? And you can just think about the energy of motion when you see a hot pot of boiling water and the molecules of that water bouncing on each other, bouncing around. You can actually see the energy in motion. Okay? Um, but in those pools of water, in a huge pool of water, when no one's there, is there kinetic energy there? Is there an energy of motion there? Is there heat there? Yes, there is. What is heat? It's a form of energy, and it's a measure of matter's total kinetic energy. And heat depends upon volume. So heat depends upon volume, but temperature, on the other hand, is not volume dependent. Temperature is what it is, <laughs> as we say. It is not volume dependent, and temperature is a measure of the intensity of heat. Think about temperature when you were going outside and um, you know, or when you're measuring your temperature with a thermometer, go to the physician and they're, um, to get just a routine checkup and they want to check your temperature and your blood pressure, they're actually measuring the intensity of heat. Water has an extremely high specific heat. So what is specific heat? The specific heat of a substance is the amount of heat that must be absorbed or lost for one gram of that substance to change its temperature by one degree. Water has a high specific heat and because of this uh, it allows water to minimize temperature fluctuations to within limits that permit life. This is extremely important, okay? This is extremely important for Earth being suitable for life. And this is important too. It's important that you know that um, when heat is absorbed, hydrogen, when that heat is absorbed when hydrogen bonds break, and that heat is released when hydrogen bonds form. This is important. Very important. Okay? So let's review that again. Heat must be absorbed to break hydrogen bonds, okay? So 
think about it. Heat must be given off to make hydrogen bonds. So when water cools just slightly, there are going to be a lot of additional hydrogen bonds that are going to form. And when that happens, what happens? Heat is released. Water cools, hydrogen bonds form, heat is released. Okay? Why is this important? Why our lives? What does it mean for marine life, for life under these huge bodies of water? Okay? What does it mean for the climate? What does it mean for the temperature in these areas on the coastal regions um, of the United States? What does it mean for our California crew, um, our students who may be missing California and the weather there? You know, what does it mean for our students from the Caribbean who may be missing that constant temperature? Why is it the way it is? The pro this emergent property of water it's high specific heat explains this very well. There are milder climates because during the summertime these large bodies of water will absorb the heat from the day so that it's not too hot. And then in the winter time these large bodies of water will take that heat that they absorbed during the day and release it pop quiz. <laughs> so I have three images here. Okay. Here it's a cold day on the coast. But what you see here is that the sea, S-E-A, cools slower than the land. So you see that steam is rising into that colder air. Okay. Here, image two, there's a hot desert land and there's a the sea behind it. You can barely see, you can barely S-E-E -E it, but it's behind there, okay? And this hot desert land will heat up more than the sea behind it, but it's going to cool off. This hot desert land is going to cool off also more quickly than that sea will, okay? Now, what I want you to do is answer this question. In this image three, okay, there's warm land here, warm ocean, okay? So I want to know which one is going to cool faster when the sun goes down. I want to know why. Which one will cool faster? Will it be the warm land or the warm ocean? I want to know why you answered the way you did. Use the terminology that we've discussed in terms of the emergent properties of water. And answer this in a post on the Blackboard Forum. forum. Okay? For credit. Chat with you on Blackboard. So also along the lines of moderation of temperature, it's a fact that water has the ability to cool by, to cool us and organ, other organisms by evaporation. Uh, so evaporative cooling is the term. And evaporation or vaporization is the transformation of a substance from a liquid to a gas. And the definition of heat of vaporization is the amount of heat required for one gram of a substance to go from liquid state to a gaseous state, to a gas state, okay? From a liquid to a gas. The amount of heat required for one gram of a substance to go from liquid to gas is heat of vaporization. And water has a high heat of vaporization, vaporization because uh, the, of the hydrogen bonds. Once again, it's about these hydrogen bonds. These hydrogen bonds must be broken before these molecules can leave the liquid state. So evaporative cooling, it's due to water's high heat of vaporization. Therefore, as the liquid evaporates, the surface of the liquid left behind cools off. And you'll see this in the um, example of a terrestrial organism, such as a lizard, these are exothermic organisms, so they can't regulate their body temperature like we can, like humans can. Um, we can regulate our own body temperature. Uh, and so because a lizard can't do that, it uses um, evaporative cooling to cool off. So you'll notice a number of things are going on. It's a very busy little image 
um, and all of these things you'll learn about um, as you matriculate through this course and take your organismic biology course in the spring um, if you're one of those people who will go on with the other part of this course but for this topic it's important to understand that evaporative cooling is necessary to moderate temperature in regards to um, lizards and also in regards to human beings so we use the property of evaporation we're not uh, exothermic we're endothermic organisms we can regulate our temperature and in regulating our temperature in in, in um, times when it's extremely hot so I have an image of key sweat here to remind us that we sweat to remind us that when there are concerts and it's very hot your body sweats or if you're exercising your body sweats and as the sweat pulls off of your body um, and it evaporates the skin that's left behind that's going to be the surface in, in this example um, it cools off so this is evaporative cooling another emergent property of water is the ability of water to expand upon freezing in other words ice floats um, and when it does that it forms an insulation above a body of water so water for water um, becomes ice at zero degrees Celsius and when it does this ice then is less dense than water and it forms this crystalline structure and it creates this floating barrier it forms this crystalline structure and creates this floating barrier this is very important because as um, a lot of substances cool they contract okay and when water freezes the molecules are not moving vigorously enough to break the hydrogen bonds so the molecules become locked in a crystal lattice okay and they form four hydrogen bonds and when this happens the ice um, of course is less dense than the water and it just floats okay so it forms this insulating body of water and it forms this barrier and this is very important for life because life then can exist under these frozen surfaces under this ice life can exist okay so everything under these floating bodies of ice are not frozen okay and um, and so it insulates the liquid below if you will so then in the winter time when the air the outer air is really freezing cold it's not that cold below this ice okay so it forms that barrier and in addition to that it helps the polar bears okay it helps them it gives them a, um, a path now they have another way to go and get food they can go and get food in an area of uh, land where they couldn't before but because of global warming a lot of things are changing and we will dialogue about this on blackboard form now this is a diagram uh, figure 3.5 and it shows the hydrogen bonds in ice and compares them to the hydrogen bonds that are formed in liquid. And we mentioned how um, the hydrogen bonds in liquid water are fragile and they're constantly breaking and reforming. But when you have that crystal lattice that's formed when um, water turns to ice at zero degrees Celsius, um, they, these hydrogen bonds are very stable. So you have a hydrogen bond here and here between these water molecules and it's very stable okay very ordered very organized and very stable